Good morning, interwebs. So, here we are, at the desk, in the talk. So, first and foremost, I want this made very clear. This video is not a hit piece against somebody else who made a video. I did receive a text message and then a phone call yesterday evening about a video that a customer had seen done by Magic Prepper. And so I went and I watched the video. And then I also went and watched some of his other videos. And I just want to put this out there first and foremost. I think it's great that um, this guy is definitely sharing his knowledge. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And on that point, I want to share a little bit of extra knowledge. Because the video I watched was basically... His take on why not to buy a Kimber, especially for your first 1911, and I agree with him 100%. And even as a first handgun, as a new gun owner, I don't normally recommend a 1911 to a buyer. The 1911 does come with a lot of nuances of ownership. So, I'm just going to give a couple of small examples of fit and finish on a 1911. And hopefully... This little bit of knowledge will kind of make, if you go and you watch his video, or if you've watched his video and happen to see this, then maybe a little bit, a slight little bit of insight on just a couple of procedures on assembling a 1911 um, will kind of get the wheels turning and um, hopefully get people to want more knowledge before they make a purchase. So, full disclosure, I'm not making this up. I do use shop manuals like the one here. You see the Colt 45 Automatic by Jerry Kuhnhausen. Great book. Lots of knowledge. Breakdown on some of the history as well as dimensionals information as well as building information. The Gun Digest book, the complete book of the 1911. It's also going to give you some great knowledge. Um, folks like Larry Vickers. Um, definitely. Uh, actually watching some of Larry Vickers old stuff got me into building 1911s especially when I started the basic 1911 armors course and then moved on to the advanced course um, I do strongly believe in giving credit where credit is due and with all that out of the way once again disclaimer whatever you want to call it this is not a hit piece on Magic Prepper's video this is just a little bit of add-on because I don't use that C word caveat don't believe in it so some of your basics that a lot of people don't understand is the amount of fit and finish that actually goes, goes into a 1911. Even your Rock Islands, your Springfields, your lower end Kimbers even. Um, not so much the um, great looking stainless 10 millimeter wrap hide that he had. In the very beginning you want to ensure that your magazine fits in your trigger bow. Because when the trigger bow is in the frame, and this is just an unfinished frame. Um, even your trigger bow is going to ride in a set. Hopefully, I don't think you're going to be able to see them, but there's actually two grooves inside the receiver. Your trigger bow is going to run through, or your frame, however, whichever way you want to say it. There is no wrong way. Um, so it's going to actually pass through and out the trigger opening. But if you look in there, your trigger bow is now wrapped around the outside of your magazine well. So if your magazine wasn't happy with your trigger bow, or maybe your trigger bow is bent, whatever have you, that's going to cause an issue. Now, this trigger is not fit for the receiver or the frame because it is not smooth to actuate. So actually there would be some fitting and polishing to get this trigger and this frame completely copathetic. And those are some of the little nuances that it seems like he's talking about, the fit and finish. Some of the other things that he mentioned is um, a tight fit in 1911 is more accurate. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to go into that on three points real quick. And I'm not going to browbeat a 1911 and I'm not going to browbeat what he said. So in your slide you have rails that are cut. When you cut rails, or rails are cut in to your pistol frame, your slide rails are cut right here. And that dimension and this dimension for these rails have to be happy. 
So if you get these tolerances nice and tight, you will get a slide that doesn't wiggle around. I'm sure some, some of us have been out looking at you, maybe used firearms. And you notice you can grab the slide and you can just wiggle the frame around. This auto ordinance D-Day commemorative is actually pretty tight. There's a little bit of wiggle in there. But so if your slide is good and tight, then that's going to maintain your sight alignment as you're firing. Your slides, your slides not moving around. Your sights aren't moving around because conveniently your sights are on your slide. One other quick factor is the barrel bushing. Barrel bushing, the barrel actually, because it's a bushing, comes through it as the slide moves back to the rear before it comes back to battery. If your slide bushing tolerances are real loose and sloppy, your barrel will have a tendency to boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I'm not making that sound effect again. So, just a couple of little things that, yes, a production line gun is going to be built with looser tolerances so that they can be put together and they function and they function good and they go out the door. A tighter tolerance pistol is meant to be more accurate and more functionally correct. And yes, there is a difference between a $700 1911 and a $3,000 1911. Looking at them, you wouldn't. But that's when, and I'm going to come back to it just like he does a few times in his video, he explains fitting and polishing. Little details in a 1911 are different than if you assemble your Glock. If you have a Glock 19 and you want to change your slide, that's great because everything is cut on a standard. If you wanted to take a 1911, this cut for one slide, and now you want to change the slide, you may have to refit the slide rails or even get a set of peening blocks and close the, the slide rails so that your slide can be fit to your frame. That's actually a very delicate procedure. I do have the peening blocks and I've done it twice. And it's a slow process, like anything. It's meant to be accurate and functional functional and accurate sometimes you have to give a little to get a little I do remember reading in the basic 1911 armors course where they went over the 1911 um, competition shooters and a lot of it was if it was tight it was accurate and then they even went and did things like they beveled opened and changed the ejection port for ejection pattern smoother ejection faster ejection and they also went a lot into their barrel lug lockup, which is the barrel locking into the slide at the time of firing so that it's more accurate. And they also made caliber changes from, from 45 ACP to 9 mil, 38 special, and even 40 core bone. But those 1911s were never carried per se. They were used in competition. A carry gun, yes, you would want something with a little bit slighter tolerances so that you're more apt on function but not sacrificing accuracy so whether or not this helped i'm not sure go ahead give a like a subscribe um got 34 subscribers of the 100 right now to do the custom on location historic piece here in western arizona also if you have a question about 1911 fitting or questions about it go ahead drop them in the comments and if i'm able to answer them i will if not, I'll go to where the knowledge is because the 1911 is a 100 plus year old pistol. And a lot of the early knowledge as people were making additions to refinements to John Moses Browning's design through the years, they ended up in books. Not everything in the books have made their way to the interwebs. That's another thing too. take a lot, everybody, to include my input here today. Take everybody's input, do your homework, get your knowledge and make informed decisions. The big premises of all this today is knowledge is power. That's all I got for you. Don't forget, go ahead if you got a question, drop it in the comments. And I'm gonna say it one more time. This is not a hit piece on somebody else to put a video on YouTube. I'm just trying to maybe spur a little bit of interest in finding out the nuances to get the knowledge to fully understand what he was going over. That's all I got, everybody stay safe.